A variety of options for the LS1 240SX swap. I interchanged several brands um, to try to fit my liking as well as our budget. Uh, first we went uh, with thanks to Mishimoto. We went with the Mishimoto radiator as well as the Mishim Mishimoto cooling lines. Uh, we also used CX Racing for the headers, motor mounts, transmission mounts, and exhaust. They make pretty much an all-in-one package uh, you can buy it all on once. Uh, I found that it was actually cheaper on eBay because they include the shipping, versus if you buy it right from their website, you have to pay for shipping. Uh, it came with stainless steel headers. Uh, I heat wrapped them, as well as transmission mounts uh, and a full stainless steel exhaust with V-bands for the S13 and S14 option. Uh, here are the CX Racing motor mounts, uh, which is nice because they have your selection of how far forward or back you would like your engine. Sicky is also nice because they, they just give you one choice. So where the Sicky motor mount is is where it mounts up. CX Racing gives you the option, which I don't know if it's positive or negative because now I need to figure out uh, is it going to fit if I slide this forward or if I slide it back. So I try to keep it centered hoping that it, it slides right in. I also used, um, when you remove the original oil pan, I used a Canton um, bell housing shield because this was all wide open. And then this is also a CX Racing oil pan with uh, several different chambers to keep, keep the uh, oil from rushing to one side uh, with certain G-force. While the engine was out, we did uh, new valve cover gaskets. I pulled off the water pump, all the pulleys, and uh, we did a timing chain as well as the gears. And I also did a Melling high volume, uh, high pressure oil pump as well, because I, I really don't want the engine to be starved of oil uh, mid drift. Uh, again, you can see we used the uh, new valve cover gaskets as well. While everything was off, we had the valve covers painted as well as the front pulley, and we're going to do a uh, full transmission flush. Um, so from here we have, I also use Siki for a lot of parts. Here is our, our Willwood uh, master cylinder, which we got from Siki as well as remote bleeder. Uh, you'll see here they give you an adapter too because it won't mount up directly to the firewall of the S14. Uh, we got the Siki, no this is a CX Racing drive shaft, CX Racing exhaust. Okay, so yesterday I went, I took the day going through the engine as well as the engine bay. Uh, we got the SR20 out uh, and started working on the LS1. Thanks to wiring specialties with the wiring harness, uh, everything was pretty much plug and play right from the front all the way to the back of the transmission. And what I did is I left the original wiring harness in the car and as I unplugged one, I plugged in the other and slowly worked from the front to the back. Uh, it was pretty self-explanatory. The only things I needed to change were we got the adapters, the oil pressure sensor, as well as the uh, coolant temperature sensor. Uh, these are the fittings that come from wiring specialties for your original uh, SR20 or uh, KA sensors to screw into, and then they screw into the head and then into the block. Those are the only changes I had to make aside from just the regular wiring that plugged right in. Uh, everything was pretty easy to do. Uh, since then I also, we did a new serpentine belt um, and just went through the engine one more time. Here's the Siki power steering line and uh, then we'll move over to the S14. When I had the engine out we uh, bashed the tunnel in for, to fit the T56 bell housing, uh, approximately an inch to an inch and a half deep, uh, and then eight inches in. And while we were doing it, we, um, I took an industrial coating to the firewall fenders and engine bay just to clean it up and make it presentable to do before the LS1 goes in. Um, next we're going to install the 
motor mounts into the LS1 as well as the transmission mounts and then begin the process of dropping the engine. Got a Siki power steering line which comes with the low pressure line as well. Uh, it's basically an all-in-one kit. It mounts right up to the engine itself, to the power steering pump. Uh, very, very simple and easy to use. So, so far what I found to be the most difficult in this entire swap was the master cylinder swap. Uh, Siki provides an adapter plate, which you'll see in there, for the Willwood master cylinder. But what you need to do, and you don't realize when you first buy the product, and it seems pretty simple, is you need to get underneath the car, uh, behind the clutch, and um, disassemble the pin and rod that's connected to the clutch pedal. Pull it out, pull the whole master cylinder out, but it's pretty tight in here. Uh, once the master cylinder's out, you can put in the new uh, Willwood master cylinder with the Siki plate adapted to the master cylinder. So uh, attach the adapter plate to the master cylinder and then hook it to the firewall. That was pretty simple. Uh, what was a little discouraging is it didn't really mention anywhere that I read that the slave cylinder is inside the transmission and in order to uh, replace the adapters for the Siki setup, you need to take the transmission off of your motor. Uh, here's your slave cylinder, two bolts here and here, uh, 10 mils, they pull right off. This is what your stock slave cylinder looks like. Uh, what you'll need to do is replace, you'll need to remove this right here for your Siki bleeder line, which will be right here and then mounted to somewhere on the firewall. And the other thing that I had a lot of difficulty with, I actually had to call Siki and they, they helped me through it is I bought a new slave cylinder. Um, just while I'm in there already, I figured we'd get this done. So if you see here, there's a pin that needs to be pushed through. You need to push through that pin and pull this quick disconnect out completely. Put in the sicky connector and then press that pin back in right there. Uh, so this is what it looks like, a stock T56 slave cylinder. This is what your slave cylinder will look like after your Siki adapter. Uh, I originally put the master cylinder in with this connector on and then realized uh, I, I kind of went backwards and had to connect it onto the slave cylinder first, then from the slave cylinder onto the transmission, then the transmission back into the engine. Then once the engine's in, I can do all the connections to the master cylinder. Everything in this kit fits very precisely. You'll see how much clearance there is from the oil pan to the sway bar to the power steering lines. Everything's really, really tight. Um, in order to get the headers in, uh, I actually mounted them, mounted the motor mounts to the, to the car, then dropped the block onto the motor mount so I could get it fit. You'll see, uh, so I can get it fit. And you just, with the CX Racing Kit, you just count the number of holes uh, and that's how far back you want the engine. So you can line it up on both sides. A uh, few problems I have found that were, took a considerable amount of time. The headers were a lot of work. Uh, obviously the spark plug wires had to come off, the um, coils had to come off, the valve covers. So I mocked up the engine to the motor mounts and where I wanted everything and then I I took the motor mounts, I disconnected the motor mounts from the bottom, which you'll see right there. Um, I unscrewed, unbolted them, and then I jacked the engine up again. Uh, not all the way out, just about halfway out, and I slowly put the headers on, and it was just an awful, awful fit. They were not easy to do. I don't know if it's because I heat wrapped them, if that just added too much, but you'll see how much space is actually in there. I mean, there's almost no space in there. You'll see the drive shaft right there, the um, steering column right there. Needs to be removed from the shaft, which is right there. So you'll see how tight everything is. Um, apparently what I needed to do, you do have to disassemble the steering column, shaft, so the headers can fit in. 
And one of the problems I've now encountered is that the header is pressing up against the steering column shaft and uh, the header's not fitting right. That's pressed now and you'll see the gap is off on the oil pan as well as the motor mount is not lined up either. Uh, all of this is just a lot of work. None of it was anticipated and it's all a huge pain in the ass. So now I have to jack the engine up again, try to play with the uh, steering rod, and try to get the holes to line up again.